go. Hello, everyone. I wish you a good day, a good afternoon, and a good evening. Welcome to the Spine of Virtual High School Debate Tournament 2024 for May 12, 7.45 a.m., room number three. Judge Donald Broussard will be giving us feedback and announcing the winner at the end of the debate. Judge, please be sure to record your information in tabroom.com as soon as possible after this debate so that teams can be advised of their next debate status. I'm the moderator and facilitator for this 2024 SPAN tournament room, and my name is Mara Nicola. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort, not on any preset NSS position. NSS clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore, develop, and settle space. However, NSS also believes that open, honest debate will facilitate that goal. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case. No statement by any debater or coach is an official position of NSS. Now, let's meet our debaters. The affirmative position is held by Team Denuri. Denuri launched in 2022, also known as the Korea Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter, is, and it is South Korea's first lunar orbiter. The orbiter was tasked with surveying lunar resources such as water ice, uranium, helium, silicon, and aluminium, and producing a topographic map to help select future lunar landing sites. The team is coached by Nate Glancy, who currently coaches high school debate in Illinois and at the University of Wyoming, as well as in summer debate institutes. Nathan's space interests focus on resource usage in space and the application of international law to space-based development. Team Denuri, please give us your name and the country you are representing. Hi, I'm Alexandra, the first speaker for the affirmative team, and I am representing Romania. Hello, I'm Adit. I am the second speaker, a second half speaker. I'm representing India. Hello, I'm the after speaker uh, from the Nuri. My name is Sudans and I'm representing Turkey. Hello, I'm the fourth affirmative speaker. My name is Vishnana and I represent Belarus. Hello, everyone. Next, we'll hear from Team Aditya. Aditya is a choreography spacecraft for studying the solar atmosphere designed and developed by the Indian Space Research Organization and various other Indian space research institutes. The team is coached by Brielle Mitchell, who has been involved with the SPUN debate program as a winning university debater and now as a high school coach. She is currently graduating from Howard University and will be pursuing a law degree in the fall. Keller, Texas, USA is, the ho is her hometown. Team Aditya, please give us your name and the country you are representing. Hello, my name is Sarah and I'm representing Romania. Hello, my name is Ishi, I'm representing USA. India. Hello, my name is William, and I'm representing the U.S. It's good to have everyone here. Uh, if, I, if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand in your participants icon on your screen. Please mute your mic unless you're speaking, and only the presenting team and judge should turn on their videos unless directed by the moderator. Our debating format today follows the same format as in the practice tournament. Now, let's get started. The 2024 SPAN High School resolution is space development would best be performed by autonomous AI and robotic systems. We hear from the first speaker from Team Danuri representing the affirmative position. Team Danuri, your first speaker may begin your affirmative intro. You have four minutes. First speaker from Team Danuri, you have four minutes. Okay. Um, good morning, afternoon, or evening to the moderator, honorable judge, and worthy opponents. The resolution for today's debate is space development would be best performed by autonomous AI and robotic systems. I'm Alexandra, and I will be the first speaker for the affirmative team. I would like to start with a definition of the resolution before introducing my first argument. Space development refers to the development of technologies, infrastructures, and capabilities that make it possible for humanity to conduct operations in outer space. The intent of best performed is, for us, system capacity and risk minimization. 
Autonomy could be defined as the ability of an agent to accomplish goals through logical decision making based on its knowledge and comprehension of the world itself and the situation. Robotic systems are systems that provide intelligent services and information by interacting with their environment, including human beings, via the use of various sensors, actuators, and human interfaces. Our first argument will center around the enhanced processing power of AI and how that plays a significant role in space development. For space exploration, increased processing power is revolutionary, and AI is especially well-suited to take advantage of this benefit. First and foremost, autonomous AI has the advantage of real-time decision-making. There can be substantial communication delays in the vastness of space, with, and without waiting for orders from Earth, AI on board spacecrafts or rovers would evaluate sensor data and make crit critical decisions in real time. For autonomous operations, hazard avoidance, or time-sensitive scientific observations, this is particularly important. And it links back to best performance. is that I identify patterns and extract meaningful insights much faster, which could lead to significant discoveries that might have otherwise been missed, which also links back to the system capacity part of the definition. A study by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers supported by the National Space Research and Development Agency said, quote, past, past missions have demonstrated that using onboard autonomy to enable faster response time improves operational efficiency optimizes costs and increases system reliability. Now that we have demonstrated that this works on a theoretical level, let's take a look at some real life examples of companies that are currently, currently trying to adopt autonomous AI in the field of space exploration. For example, the European Space Agency or ESA for short funded in 2022, 12 projects that explored whether we could apply the latest developments in AI and advanced computing paradigms to make satellites more reactive, agile and autonomous. Although it may seem like a big step to go from the ex exploratory research to practical space ap applications, the ESA is already beginning to use AI in its space missions. For instance, rovers are able to maneuver around obstacles on their own and artificial intelligence is used to schedule the downloading of data from Mars rovers. Additionally, astro astronauts on the board of the International Space Station are benefiting from artificial in intelligence. Delving deeper into the ESA projects, it is also important to mention that projects such as the ones funded by the ESA bring nations together, thus promoting universalization. The best way to bring humans together is by offering them the idea of progress, and AI is an amazing tool to do that. When faced with the possibility of revolutionary scientific discoveries, people will put their differences aside, proving our argument that autonomous AI also works to towards our universalization objective. My argument is that AI is especially suited to take advantage of the benefit of increased processing power and, in light of this analysis, it was proven that not only is it a good theoretical idea, but that it is also practical. Thank you. Thank you too. Now we begin a three minute prep for the NEG team to prepare our cross -ex. If the NEG team is already ready to move on before the three minutes have elapsed, please indicate to me and we will proceed.
Prep time is up. Speaker negative one of Team Aditya, please begin your two minute cross -ex. Hello. So, um, as we move into space in a future where no humans are there in it, uh, what will happen to the current infrastructures in space which is being used right now? I'm sorry, I don't understand how this ties into the use of autonomous AI. Because uh, you mentioned that the, um, how can I explain it? Uh, you mentioned that the, Well, what is well, what is happening with the humans? I mean, you said that there will be no humans and you mentioned some missions that showed it. What missions did indeed show it? So I said that the ESA is currently trying to adopt the uh, use of autonomous AI in its space missions and that the ISS is also benefiting from AI. So. In the future, from my understanding and from what I believe, it will just keep making progress. It will be a beneficial thing for, for all humanity to continue to use AI so that we can make progress that much faster. Okay, and as I asked, what missions uh, did you find that shows that it actually works? You mentioned it in your speech. Yes, I mentioned the ESA projects. So, um, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, <laughs> your time is up. We'll move on. Uh, now your opening argument, speaker negative one of Team Aditya, you have four minutes. Hi, I am the first speaker on the negative side from Team Aditya. Our three main contentions regarding today's debate are the following. Cost of AI in space development, the intellectual capability of AI, and the last contention that my colleague from the second speaker will show is the accessibility of AI and the bias included in it. Space, as everybody knows, is everything beyond 100 kilometers of the Earth's surface. The development that refers to space is an intellectual, industrial, and explorational use of space. Autonomous is the ability to act independently in this case, with or without human intervention. Robotic systems are the coordination between hardware and software components of a system such as between robots and AI. Universalization is the phase of human development, transitioning to a single worldview where all human beings are treated in the same way. It also supports the cooperation between different nations as opposed to their competition. The first speaker on the pro side said that using robotic systems and AI is used to Im improve progress, but fails to note that the resolution discussed AI and robotic systems use as a forerunner. So I will show that with my second argument. The first major cost harder of AI is development. The kind of AI that will be needed to solve problems in space would have, a fun would have to function at a level order of magnitude above the system that we have today. Just to run ChatGPT costs over $550 million per year. Its development costs are well over $10 billion. This is likely a fraction of what it would cost to develop a space-capable cap AI. To say that it would cost twice what ChatGPT costs in a is a conservative estimate. Additionally, new hardware that can support the processing power needs of AI while also being designed for space would also likely cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Comparatively to the technology needed for long-term human space flight has already mostly been developed, potentially making it a cheaper alternative as opposite to AI. For autonomous AI, another major issue is maintenance. On humans, main spaceship. If something goes wrong with a ship, it's typically possible for the humans aboard to fix it. If the AI has an error, however, it will likely be unable to correct itself due to the error. This could mean losing autonomous AI craft at a faster rate than humans' main craft, or at the very least, 
long and costly maintenance operation. Another major problem with AI's intellectual capability is its instability in the future. An AI needs to be trained on a data set so that it can generate solutions to problems. If AI is a fundamental component of space development, it will have to train on data produced by other AIs. Over time, this has shown that, that it has shown to corrupt the responses of the AI to various problems. In addition to this, computers have about 1% chance to encountering an uncorrectable error. This chance compounds quickly over time, and it is higher the more calculator, calculations that are being performed. These two issues presented are a significant threat to the long life of any autonomous AI in space, a factor that is also critical to their cost effectiveness. My colleague from the second speaker will elaborate this argument. Thank you. Thank you too. Now, affirmative one from Danuri, please start your cross X. You are allotted two minutes. Okay, um, you've mentioned that AI is expensive, which, well, it's pretty obvious that it is, but isn't human life more important than some money we could spend? I don't know how this could actually have a meaning with what we are talking about. I don't see the point of money and humans, you didn't explain it well. Sorry, I can understand. I'm sorry. Let me try to rephrase that then. So um, AI is the, the more safer option. Like <clears throat> in space, the harsh environments are very are a safety hazard for humans. I think we can all agree to that. And this is why I am asking that are you putting a cost on human safety? Because AI, yes, it is expensive, but it also might save human lives or make them easier. Was that clear? Uh, yeah, I see where you're going, but we didn't say anything that we would put costs in uh, for humans, so to say. AI is indeed very costly and it, it's better to use humans for space development and to save this money for uh, doing more research, more space exploration, and with that, more space development. So you're saying it's better to put humans at risk than spend some money? So it's better to save money than human lives? I didn't say anything about risking humans life. Yeah, in some cases it could be risky, but with the technology that is developing without AI and robotic systems, the technology that we will use to space development with humans would, would not be risky for them. We could actually not put them at risk at all. Is up, so we have to move on. Affirmative two of Danuri now offers the second argument for the affirmative team. You have four minutes. Good morning, afternoon, and evening to everyone here. I am the after speaker for team Danuri. My second argument states that AI pioneers innovative methods of exploring celestial bodies, unraveling mysteries in space, and increasing our current understanding, opening new frontiers of cosmic exploration. It is truly remarkable how AI exploration can prioritize safety while simultaneously enhancing efficiency and accuracy. By implementing innovative techniques and precise methods, we can optimize processes and systems without compromising human well-being. This approach not only ensures that tasks are performed with utmost precision, but also drives advancements in science and technology. Through careful application of cutting edge technologies and rigorous analysis, we continuously refine our methods to achieve unparalleled levels of effectiveness. Moreover, this commitment to improvement fosters a culture of innovation, pushing the boundaries 
of what's possible in various fields, from healthcare to manufacturing to space exploration. Ultimately, it's about harnessing the power of knowledge and technology to create safer, more efficient, and more sustainable solutions that benefit us all. AI introduces methods such as deploying drones to gather crucial data on minerals, temperatures, and potential life resources across the galaxies, revolutionizing our current understanding of the celestial bodies throughout the universe. It is indeed better than humans mapping out the heavenly bodies at a very slow rate. And evidence shows that Voyager, the longest operating spacecraft in history, remains a vital source of information from beyond our solar system. Its autonomous navigation system reduces the need for continuous ground supervision, facilitating the analysis of the images it transmits back to the Earth. The planning of the trajectory, avoiding obstructions in its way, and ensuring minimal fuel, fuel is used is a very important task done with ease with the help of autonomous AI. Another advantage is that it does not require any supplies like oxygen or food or any emotions that can stop it from implementing any important action. It would have been unimaginable to picture living beings being capable of doing such things. My argument states that AI pioneers innovative methods of exploring celestial bodies. And hence, I believe that as a result of the new exploration found due to the drones, the area of the explored planets and heavenly bodies will be mapped and preserved with each country to ensure peace, equality, and the ideology of universalization. Our one swans will make faster space travel possible with AI revolutionizing space exploration by optimizing missions and ensuring safety. AI-driven mapping could enhance global security by monitoring threats of managing space traffic, fostering equitable access to space resources. In conclusion, the innovative methods pioneered by AI in exploring celestial bodies throughout the universe have significantly enhanced our current understanding of the cosmos. By using autonomous systems and advanced technology, we have been able to unravel mysteries in space that were once beyond our reach. And hence, AI will undoubtedly play an important role in increasing our knowledge. And hence, I believe the statement, space development would be best performed by autonomous AI and robotic systems is true. Thank you. Thank you. Let's now hear negative two of Tima Ditya in a two minute cross-examination. Tima Ditya, you may begin the cross-ex. All right, so thank you for your arguments. Uh, our first question is, what about AI besides human safety makes it a better system for space development? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, so firstly, AI is the, has unparalleled efficiency and accuracy as compared to humans. You can see it uh, maps out uh, different heavenly bodies at a faster rate and also observes many different things that the human eye cannot perceive. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, secondly, does the speaker acknowledge that Voyager 1 had a corrupted code glitch on its chip, which rendered Voyager 1's science and engineering data all unusable? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat the question? Oh, sure. Um, do you acknowledge that using autonomous AI and other technological systems has a detriment of making science and engineering data unusable as seen in Voyager 1? So uh, firstly, autonomous AI is completely run by AI, but uh, sometimes some glitches might be there in some um, things, but it is as AI is revolutionizing and getting more capable of doing many things, I feel 
those glitches uh, will not happen and these hazards that we all think about might happen will not be possible as AI is progressing and yeah. Okay, uh, and then our last question. Um, do you have any specific examples of where AI has allowed there to be more innovation specifically in space development? As far as my research is there, uh, many companies uh, are trying to implement AI and um, they are offering, I mean, uh, sorry, I mean, like, up. I'm sorry. Uh, let's hear from negative two, negative two from Team Aditya for your second argument. You have four minutes. Hello, my name is Nishi. I'm the second speaker for Team Aditya, and I will be continuing why space development would not be best performed by AI and autonomous robots. Now, firstly, concerning the ability to think, AI has three large problems. Not only does it have an inability to think in a non-linear way, there's also the problem of generative AI and the challenge of trusting an ethicless and emotionless entity to make life-changing decisions for our human race. Now, AI's models are strictly restricted to linear thinking or using a strict logical, analytical, and step-by-step -step basis of thinking. However, revolutionary discoveries like the heliocentric model of the universe, the discovery of gravity, things that have kept space development continuing onwards do not follow logic that's prevalent at this time. In fact, it's been proven by Kit Yates' ChatGPT experiment that by only using AI's linear thinking, wrong assumptions and outputs can commonly be made. Hence, by basing our decisions on a purely logic-centric machine, we are restricting the use of creativity in our decisions. In addition, the methods of thinking between AI and humans are opposite to each other, so being able to integrate system humans into such a system will be extremely problematic. For example, in Voyager, there was a strong um, period of time when there was no communication with humans present, and that's ultimately not what we want to do with space development. In addition, generative AI hallucination is an example made by Professor Emily M. Bender, which argues that AI's outputs have no meaning because they're just stitching together linguistic forms found in training according to probabilistic data. They don't understand the topic fully, and by entrusting our future to space to these AI models, we will put it in grave danger. Lastly, AI is more inclined to make decisions based on efficiency rather than safety, as brought up by the AFS team. It's more inclined to make uh, decisions which let's see, are more efficient or more easy for it to do that will minimize energy output, for example, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they will prioritize human safety. At the end of the day, AI is being used to develop some sort of settlement so that humans can venture out of Earth into space. And we can't do that if AI doesn't consider the safety of humans while it continues its research. In addition, concerning the socioeconomic setbacks associated with AI, there are two main ones, AI bias and job loss. So AI has been known to have extreme bias. In fact, for example, independent research at the Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh has revealed that Google has an online advertising system, which tends to display high paying positions to males more often than females. In addition, um, picture generating models where pictures show a more extreme version of the social divisions that we have today. In fact, according to Bloomberg, an analysis of more than 5,000 images created with stable diffusion found that it takes racial and gender disparities to extremes, worse than those found in the real world. Hence, by basing our future on space on such models, which even haven't improved yet to the ability that we could put them into space, we are bringing back the stereotypes that we are presently fighting to put in the past. In addition, the appearance of AI and robotic systems will lead to the disappearance of millions of jobs. India alone is home to 450 million blue collar workers and the use of AI and robotic systems will affect such workers leading to their sudden unemployment. Of course, it's not easy to give up on jobs and skills passed through generalizations in an instant. And according to veteran affairs, losing a job may damage one's sense of identity, purpose, and increase feelings of isolation, depression, anxiety, and stress, also leading to an increase in the suicide risk of a person. As the term of unemployment increases, the more suicidal a person gets. Due to what we have shown today, we prove that completely replacing humans with AI and autonomous robots is not the best option, both ethically and financially, for our future in space. Thank you. Thank you, too. Now, Team Dunuri, please start your two minute of cross X to NEG2 of Team Aditya. Uh, yes. So, um, my first question is uh, how would um, 
uh, if AI is being biased, how would it affect space development? That's a great question. So when we look at bias in AI, it tends to be the bias that the makers have put into it. Right. So, for example, in these gender searches and things like that, it's looking for inherent biases, which maybe the creator didn't even know existed. For example, biasing against men versus women. Now, in the hands of AI, you're ultimately this is about a bunch of nations coming together to create this AI. Right. And we know that these nations, unfortunately, do not have the same access to resources and opportunities. There are some leaders in space development, let's say the USA, Russia, China, who are doing incredible things. But there are other nations like Zimbabwe, Tanzania, who are a bit behind. But ultimately, under the idea of universalization, they would still be involved in these systems. So these countries then have the ability to bias and create an unrepresentative space industry, which would contradict the idea of universalization. Uh, my second question is, do you think humans would have done better on a mission like Voyager 1? So in my opinion, the question is not about whether humans or technology are better at space development, right? Space development for years has been run under the idea of bringing hope. It's the idea that anyone on Earth, we are going towards this greater mission of getting people into space. And ultimately, when you have humans in space, they're going to be held to a different standard, in my opinion. Because you have people in space. There are people who are proving that cutting-edge research can exist in space. Technology is on a different level. There's not that innate human connection with them. So we're not looking at humans being better than AI. We just, we're just looking at the fact that AI ultimately is not as good as humans can be. Unfortunately, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we begin a two-minute prep time for both teams to prepare uh, their rebuttals. Okay, prep time is up. Uh, negative three from Team Aditya. Please give your rebuttal in your four minutes of time. Do I start now? Um, yes. Uh, hello, I'm Partham, and I'll be and I'll be proving why the <clears throat> why space development will not be best performed by AI and autonomous robots. First of all. <clears throat> I will be uh, proving why the affirmative statements are not correct. When the affirmative was uh, stating why AI 
should be better, uh, should be used, they don't mention any real missions uh, or any real applications at the moment. They don't, uh, <clears throat> they don't mention anything that is concrete that we can stand on and say that yes, AI is the future of space development. They don't specify the involvement of humans in space. That is the main reason of this, uh, uh, that is the main reason of this debate. They also don't specify, uh, and they don't um, specify what will happen to the existing infrastructure and how that will be used uh, later on. Secondly, when they gave examples such as the Voyager 1, they gave examples which are not related to this, uh, this debate, such as Voyager 1, it does not have any autonomous robots or or AI. It is It was completely controlled from space centers uh, uh, on Earth. And, and they also uh, they also say and they also mentioned that AI can be used to uh, to innovate and to bring forth more opportunities. But that goes against the very model of AI, which is not innovation. It is just uh, it is just taking ideas from previous data. And now I'll also be continuing on why AI and autonomous robots would not be perfect for space as they have some serious, uh, severe problems which have been covered throughout this debate. One, AI's model is strictly dependent on a method of thinking based on past facts and not the present situation. When we move into an unfamiliar environment such as space, we cannot depend on a machine using information from the past to make decisions for the future. We cannot depend on a machine incapable of thinking creatively. We cannot depend on a machine unable to innovate. Two, robots just perform actions without understanding them. But AI is even worse. It makes wrong assumptions and creates wrong decisions with neither understanding the input nor the output. Three, AI enables machines to make decisions on their own based on the training data they have been given. But this data cannot account for the situations yet to come. Hence, it cannot always be relied on and depended upon. Four, as mentioned previously, AI needs to be trained on a data set developed by another AI model. And so over time, the responses produced will corrupt. Also, computers have a 1% chance of encountering an uncorrectable error each year, which compounds over time, thus making them unreliable without human intervention. Five, also, since AI has no ethical values or emotions, it won't know the consequences of its actions and will always sacrifice safety or efficiency. Hence, trusting such an entity with our future in space will put it in jeopardy. An example of this, uh, I'll, be, I'll be quoting an example of the radical thinking of AI from the newspaper, The Economic Times, which stated that when ChatGPT or any other uh, <clears throat> AI model was asked what, uh, what the solution of climate change would be, its first answer was always the extinction human race. Hence, we can say that it does, not it does not understand the ethics involved in life, and we can't and we can't trust it with our future. Now, six, the cost. The cost of creating and maintaining an AI model specific to a task will always outweigh the cost of sending a human to space to do the same job cheaper. Why create a model to think like a human when you can just send a human? Hence, it won't make sense to use AI and autonomous robots as a foundation of our journey into space. Seven, AI pushes- your time is up. I'm sorry, I'll have to stop you here. Uh, okay, could I just say my last point? Your time is up, unfortunately. I cannot let you do that. Uh, okay. Okay, now affirmative three of Team Denuri. Now give your four minute rebuttal, please. Hello everyone, esteemed judge and worthy opponents. I will be the after speaker for our debates. Let me by begin by summarizing the arguments made by previous affirmative speakers. First, we argued that the enhanced processing power of AI and how that plays a significant role in space development. Second, AI pioneers innovative methods of exploring the cosmos, unraveling mysteries in space increase our current understanding. My task today is to build upon these arguments and address the counterpoints raised by the negative team. The negative team contends that there are risks associated with autonomous AI, such as potential malfunctions and the catastrophic consequences consequences. However, we must acknowledge that any technology has its own set of risks, but the potential benefits AI brings to space development far outweigh the risks. 
To mitigate the risks, the development and deployment of AI and robotic systems in space would have already gone through testing and so on. The combination of true of preparation and comprehensive oversight will help ensure that even in an event of on-person issue, measures can be promptly taken to rectify the situation, minimizing potential risks and maximizing safety. It is important to have AI in space exploration since it's more safe for us humans. Humans can follow the autonomous AI systems and stay safe from the dangers of the cosmos. We take the negative team's concerns about the accountability and transparency surrounding AI decision-making process seriously, but aerospace engineers believe that autonomous control, like the sword guiding many cars down the road today, could vastly improve mission safety. This information, which we got from an article from Stanford News, further supports our argument. Also, Negwan's speaker pointed out that AI needs to be trained on data sets. This is indeed true, but she also said that AI needs to be trained with the information that got them from the other AIs. We should state that this is not particularly necessary, and there is not any information regarding that AI's the data sets should be gotten from other AIs. Let's consider language models. They are It appears that we're having plane. Voyager 1 continues to operate normally, but if its telemetry data uh, from the attitude control system doesn't match onboard conditions. Despite this anom uh, anomaly, the spacecraft uh, craft hasn't triggered any fault protection systems or entered safe mode. Um, so the malfunction about Voyager 1 was not because of AI-driven systems, but it was because of radiation, like the F3 uh, speaker proved by being against on their own arguments. To build up on the unparalleled efficiency and accuracy arguments, let us consider the launch capabilities by, provided by AI and robotic systems. According to Forbes, SpaceX uses an AI autopilot system to enable its Falcon 9 craft to carry out autonomous preparations, such as docking with the International Space Station, where it's con uh, contracted to carry out cargo deliveries for NASA. The system calculates the trajectory of the rocket through space, taking into account fuel usage, atmospheric interface, and sloshing from liquids within the engine. These examples further shows the Ottoman's AI-driven system's capabilities in space. In conclusion, by Ottoman's AI, uh, by embracing autonomous AI and robotic systems. Space development can be revolutionized, fostering innovation, economic growth, and access to the vast opportunities of universalization. Thank you. Thank you, too. Now we begin a two-minute prep time for both teams to prepare their summaries. Um, actually, uh, I have my summary already prepared. I would rather um, go right now because I have to get off immediately after I finish my summary. Is that okay? Okay, then. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Can I start now? Yes, you can. Right. AI should not be the primary method of space development for a number of reasons. While, as the affirmative mentioned, AI can sift through large quantities of data, it's both too unreliable and too unproven to be left to its own devices. And to have someone fact check or double check all of its assessments would be impractical. Its cognitive flaws mean that the data it produces likely doesn't live up to the high levels of scientific rigor necessary to produce data that human lives will eventually depend on. This unreliability slash need for review adds to the cost issue that my colleagues have highlighted. Additionally, an attempt at adopting AI in, lim in limited capacity on Earth for data processing needs is very different from using AI as the primary driver of space development. To assume that because it works in these very limited scope situations, it will eventually work as the, as the center point of space development is problematic. This development would not come without cost, as my colleagues have already highlighted, which offsets one of the largest supposed benefits of AI, which was conceded by the, by the affirmative in the first cross -ex. The affirmative believes that we are prioritizing cost over human lives, but the money saved on AI can instead be used to better protect the humans that we spent that we send to space and to do research that may save thousands of human lives in the future. The affirmative believes that AI will foster a culture of innovation, but they do not say how. They say that AI's advancements in observing the cosmos means that space development would be best performed by AI, but this is a non sequitur, as these are two very different tasks. Additionally, they say that AI will create greater equality and, and I quote, benefit us all. But as my colleagues have stated, AI stands proportionately, or AI stands to disproportionately benefit and empower already wealthy individuals and countries, disproportionately empowering them and poorly representing humanity as a whole, going against the ideals of universalization by its very definition. 
This combined with the potential disregard uh, for ethics as a consequence of AI's method, methods of thinking shows a great potential for humanitarian harm from AI in space development. It is for all the previous reasons that I believe AI shouldn't be the primary method of space development going forward. It is costly, deeply flawed in its cognition, lends itself to being unrepresentative of humanity as a whole, fails to attain the ideals of universalization, and has significant humanitarian risks like job loss. Thank you for your time. Um, I have to get off immediately now. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you, too. Now, finally, we'll hear from Affirmative 4 from Team Denuri, who will begin their summary in the four-minute allotment. Uh, good morning to everyone, esteemed judges, the timekeeper, and respected opponents. Overall, we defined best performed a system capacity and risk minimization on our first speaker. And this is the most significant criteria for the simple reason that our opponents didn't argue with it whatsoever. Keeping that in mind, I'm going to introduce several most important clashes. First, AI has the advantage of real time decision making and thus acts faster in either time scientific time sensitive scientific observations or unexpected situations and this obviously ultimately means that it is most efficient and why that's incredibly important it would make the right decision because it was trained by humans and it still includes some sort of supervision by humans according to our definition the autonomous AI is best suited for dealing with large amounts of data generated by spacecrafts or other machines and analyzes it much faster. The uniqueness of this point on our side was that it could lead to faster development of the scientific process, including the space industry as proved by our first affirmative speaker. Uh, see, it does not put human lives at risk. We think that the cost of a human life versus potential cost of autonomous AI development that our opponents mentioned, which by the way will actually go down once it will become popular and widespread as most of the current products and technology that becomes widespread, the, the uh, its price go, uh, goes down. Uh, is much more valuable. Our opponents didn't explain how exactly they're going to protect human lives because um, more because even currently with the developed technology, their lives are not protected that much more. Moreover, we gave you a study by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering by the National Space Research and Development Agency, which said that autonomous AI quote, optimizes cost. Thus, we minimize the risk which our opponents fail to address and recognize whatsoever. Um, moreover, regarding the current uh, re uh, resources and whether uh, the AI is developed technologically well, well, in the status quo, autonomous AI implementation process has started and will undoubtedly be continuing due to many benefits we address in our today's debate. Um, and this means that we do not have to prove that the technology is ready nowadays, we just have to prove that in the future, potentially, we will have the ability to implement it without having much risk. Moreover, our opponents brought up the, an example of a mission called Voyager 1, uh, and we have to recognize that it was not completely autonomous and it was controlled by humans. And obviously, this technology was not ready at that time because our opponents failed to mention that the launch of Voyager 1 was actually in 1977. So about what like autonomy are you talking about? Because this technology wasn't even on the same level as it is currently, and which means that Voyager Voyager 1 is not an accurate example of autonomous AI, and it will be developed faster and better to and better extend future as we managed to prove. Moreover, negative three, uh, the NAP3 themselves said that it was not autonomous, which completely uh, means that the um, example is invalid. Moreover, we do not um, have to look at the nowadays states as we managed to prove why that will be possible in the future. Our third speaker gave an example of SpaceX that currently uses AI and autonomous uh, system to enable its Falcon 9 craft to carry out autonomous operations and that acts to NASA's benefits. Our second clash is the biggest uh, every, um, advantage of autonomous AI and robots, which is all perilous efficiency and accuracy versus humans and AI. As space missions and accordingly their development might um, be constantly monitoring. It needs a lot of uh, analyze, uh, analyzing and calculations. Coming from the perspective of our first argument statement, which is not only autonomous AI that can make accurate 
calculations. Moreover, on the safety, yes, uh, AI is operating by itself, but it, it is still safe because when the humans do the programming, so the humans check uh, can check up on it after, as we uh, managed uh, to prove and as we address in our framing. And three, all of the parts of the technological design that go into it make it so the risk is low. And the last clash is why autonomous AI has the advantage over constant human supervision. Finally, uh, it is important to have autonomous AI in space missions so that humans can focus solely on supervising AI in space and not taking part in the missions directly. So do not only we link our arguments to universalization, but we have also proved violation for our criteria over the criteria of our opponents. And for all the reasons mentioned above, stick with us, stick with the affirmative. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. Now, uh, Judge, would you like a couple of minutes before you offer the feedback and the winning team? Or uh, can you give us the feedback now? Yeah, I could do it now. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> good job by both teams. Very impressed um, with many of the arguments that were made um, throughout as well as the time management skills throughout the debate itself. Um, I think there was a couple of things that were some, that was um, very striking. Um, I'll start with the um, affirmative or propositional team. Um, first and foremost, I like the definition that you gave. However, the one thing I do have a problem with is that the, the de definition, excuse me, of autonomy and the link of autonomy throughout the case itself. Um, it was, it your case did not link directly to the definition of autonomy itself. If you're going to utilize the definition of autonomy and really be the center point, which technically it was, of your case itself, you need to explain or show specifically how, um, what is autonomy and how autonomy looks overall. Give me, you know, very vague perspective of it doesn't really work well with the case that you're trying to present, if that makes sense, um, Team Denner, um, which allowed Team Aditya to really address the perspective of autonomy. And the prime example of this is the counterbalance to what the second speaker talked about in regards of the voy Voyager. It was a good argument that shows that autonomy is a problem in regards of space. Now, the last speaker, um, Ms. I'm sorry, I don't want to chop up your name. I'm sorry. Um, for for Team Daniel in regards of the, uh, ma'am, you you did a pretty good job in regards of hey, this was like 1977. Technology has changed throughout the time, right? I like that, but the problem, it was at the end. That needed to be throughout the entire debate itself because now we're saying that, yeah, in 1977, the foundational piece of autonomy was there. Now we have improved significantly to what we have now, which is blah, blah, blah. So the, the evolution of autonomy is what we're talking about here. That was lost in the debate itself. And I think that if it was significantly stated throughout the round, which was a significant impact in the round and a significant weighing mechanism in regards of, this is the magnitude of the growth of, um, of technology in regards of autonomy itself, you can see that it's growing and becoming better we saw based off magnitude and that would have benefited you throughout the round itself um and that would have been key and critical um the rebuttal the individual who left the i'm sorry the the, the gentleman who left on the neg side um or the opposition side um did a very good job in regards of really stating some of the flaws of the argumentation um, given throughout the first couple of speeches um, by the affirm by the um, proposition. Here's what I would say, I think, and I'm very grateful that it's being recorded. The one thing that is missing in rebuttals and summary, or what I 
I'm going to use some debate terms. So excuse me, I could explain it to you a little bit further. Um, the one thing I would easily say is to provide a roadmap in regards of argumentation. Here's what I mean by a roadmap. If you're saying, if you're telling me that, hey, judge, I really want you to go to that first point here where they say this, argue that, tell me the flaws and the impact. Go, judge, go to that second argument where they say this, here's the flaw, here's my re here's my answer, this is a voter. Does that make sense? Like, that's just lost throughout the round. So I'm, you know, I'm frantically writing, right? Um, but I don't know where I need to write at. The one thing that you young, young people have to note is that I want you as competitors to treat me like I'm a five-year-old that needs my hand, need you, that you need to guide me along the way. You know what I'm saying? Like you, if you have little brothers and little sisters and they always want to cross the road or cross the street, knowing there's going to be cars zipping in and out, what's the first thing you do? I know sometimes you may want to push your kid, your, your kid brother or push your kid sister into traffic. Don't do it, right? What do you do? You hold their hand. I want you to hold my hand right? Guide me into the argumentation that you want me to go ahead and, and analyze accordingly. And that is loss. You don't necessarily do that. So it's hard for me as a judge to say, okay, this is an argument here. Where should I flow this? Where should I notate this? Oh, okay. I'll just go ahead and take my time and kind of see where is, where is that? Does that make sense? All right, cool. Um, The last thing is if you're going to make judgments, if you're going to talk about job loss and AI biases by the opposition and even the even the proposition, give me examples. What's going on? Why is this important? And too much of the time, we're kind of just like, you know, prodding here and there. And I need direct impact, right? I need you to explain to me what's going on overall. Um. With that being said, am I supposed to give my my reason, for my decision, or, 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 just the feedback? Um, it, it, no scores, just the feedback, and also win and loss. Okay. Um, I also need access to tab room. I think I yeah, sent you that. I don't have tab room to put all my notes in. Oh, um, yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. You can so, send the notes to to me after this. That would be great. Okay. Cool. So I um. I give my ballot um, based off of a couple of things. Number one, direct argumentation in regards of who provides me a bigger impact long-term wise, as well as who provide me um, with some sort of weighing mechanism, whether it's time frame, whether it's magnitude, um, that, per, that tells me over time or right now or so on and so forth, this would be beneficial for all parties, not just the community who are directly involved with, with ESA, with NASA, or so on and so forth, but the overall scope of people itself, right? Um, yes, I, I see a hand. Um, Sudanese, did I say it right? Uh, is it okay uh, if I add something? Yeah, go, because uh, uh, I... I had uh, some glitch in my speech, so I'm not sure if uh, it, it was uh, heard. Yeah, I, I just point. realized it. Not no, at this point. I'm sorry. Just, okay, you, okay, you, I see. Thank you. You glitched for like really about 10, 12 seconds, but the, that, oh, it, okay. that was the beginning of an argument you were trying to make, but the ending is what I really cared about the most. So you were still part of that argument. So I still flowed it anyway. Uh, I don't want you to think that I didn't flow it. I didn't write it down, but I did. Um, with that being said, um, I went ahead and um, voted, I'm going to vote, excuse me, um, for the opposition team, um, Aditya, um, for this particular round itself, um, mostly because of a, a much more solid rebuttal, solid, a much more solid summary, um, and provided an actual um, weighing mechanism, um, not the strongest weighing mechanism, but a way of mechanism anyway for me to go ahead and weigh accordingly. When it comes to um, point-wise, don't necessarily know the points-wise overall. I was mostly going on um, on debate structure 
and the argumentation and even the cross examination itself. But this was a very close round. It's probably going to be maybe by one or two points um, at the most in regards of, of of point structure. But that is my decision, and I'll make sure that I provide that information um, to our um, moderator as well as our director in regards of notation. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for your feedback. Congratulations, everyone, and congratulations, Team Aditya. Uh, thank you again for participating in the 2024 Spun Debate Tournament. Judge, please be sure to enter your scores into tabroom.com. Debaters, watch tabroom at spundebates.tabroom.com to see when you will be debating next and the position you will represent if your team is continuing in the debates. The Spun Debates program would not be possible without the student debaters, coaches, hosts, moderators, and judges. So many thanks for that. Have wonderful a job, everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. Good job. Thank you. Everyone, uh, can we turn off our recording? Yes.